Hey guys, at BV Matson here, and we're gonna unbox, set up, and maybe even review the Black Widow heavy duty steel motorcycle carrier. Here's what we got in the box. And here it is, I got it off of Discount Ramps, Black Widow, 600 pound capacity, a whopping, check out the price here, $349.99. I figured if I was gonna try this, I was gonna buy a good one. I did get the ratchet straps and the locking pin for the hitch. It's a 600 pound weight capacity and uh, looks pretty solid, all right? My hopes are very high for this. I hope that I can haul 350 motorcycles out of barns and bring them back into the shop and save them. But uh, first we gotta get this thing unboxed and uh, get it on the Renegade. And when you get a box, you gotta open the box, right? So that's what we'll do here. Let me open the box with my fancy knife. And the box is opened. Here's what we got. This thing's a lot bigger. <laughs> a lot bigger than I thought and a lot heavier than I thought. This thing's a beast. Time to start tearing into it. And all the nuts and bolts just fell on the ground. Great start. So we got it all unboxed. Here's what you get. Here's all the parts. Not that many parts. Not too much to deal with here. Looks like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Look at that. Reflectors. Black Widow. Reflector. Looks like you can put a license plate on the back of it if you want. And here's the ramp. Kind of cool, like the textured surface on the ramps. This is actually the hitch side. This is the ramp, the loading ramp right there. Stuff's heavy, feels pretty legit to me. There's the wheel chalk parts. I don't know, I guess we just gotta kinda dive into the instructions, starting putting the Black Widow together. And just taking a look at all the uh, Different components, looks like I've got everything I need there. And here's like my favorite thing. When you're looking at instructions, I love it when they say what you're gonna need. 17 millimeter and a six millimeter Allen wrench. Let's go procure those. I have procured a 17 millimeter and my millimeter Allen wrench set. Ready to put the Black Widow together. All right, following the instructions, I've got it laid out just like it looks like in the instructions. You got four shorty bolts and you got four longer ones. The four shorties hold your actual hitch connection on. The other one kind of holds your tether bar. I don't know what that's actually called, but the other two go there. So pretty straightforward so far. Let me get these in. There we go. We got all our bolts in place. Perfect, just like that. Just remember these ones are actually Allen heads and they're a flat side on the bottom. So you push them through, nuts on the bottom. Just remember that. Time to tighten it up. And nothing special here. Just to tighten up those nuts and bolts. Make sure everything's nice and secure. And over on these again, just remember these are your Allen heads. All right, same on the other side, but we'll need to hold this in place to get these on good. Beauty. We'll come back around and make sure everything's super tight as we get going. One more side to do. Next step is to flip this bad boy over and uh, I'm mostly gonna be hauling 350 motorcycles. There's the 1970 CB350 hanging out. And basically it looks like you just kind of align your tie downs. Looks like it centers up pretty nice on both the front and rear axle. Now we gotta put the wheel chalk in. This is gonna be kind of interesting. Try to kind of see where this is gonna go. I think it's gonna be these front two and then I need to put this little teeter-totter in, which is, which is kind of cool too. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the front position. 
because it does look like once it's in place, maybe, actually, I think I'll go back one. I think I'll go there. I'm just trying to line it up with where I'm at. I think this might take a little finagling. I might actually have to roll the bike on and uh, make sure it sits in real nice. But uh, this is the next step. You're going to use the uh, six shorties. There's uh, one pivot point here and two on that. And upon further inspection, the front hold actually can only go here, okay? So that's gonna go there. All of your adjustment is gonna come from your little teeter-totter that goes in there. I'm a little bit bummed the thing did get bent up a little bit in shipping, but uh, no big surprise, man, that uh, this thing was a beast. All right, we got the front stay in. Now I'm just gonna measure the width of my tire. And it's right about 25 inches from what I can tell. So I'm gonna go 25 inches, this ballpark it. I might have to move this later on. And it looks like when this is in position, looks like it's gonna be this first kind of one. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. If I gotta move it, I gotta move it either way. So uh, cool, let's get that in. All right, working smarter, not harder here. Um, went and grabbed an old front tire. So let's test this out. Peter totter kind of goes down. Let me give you a little bit better look here. I did actually move it to the second. So if you got an 18 inch front wheel, CB350, that second notch is gonna be right where you wanna be. And this is gonna drop right in there. I really like this kind of design. You roll it up, teeter it over, the bike's gonna be locked in there. That is just about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten up these two bolts. Not gonna go super tight on these. I'm actually really surprised there's not, not a couple washers in there. I'm really surprised by that. Double check the instructions and, and there wasn't, but I imagine, I mean, you got a, little, a lot of weight coming forward on this thing. So I guess it makes sense to be able to do that. But yeah, there we go. All right, we're already to the last two steps. Next thing is to install the ramp. So this ramp, all right, this actually bolts right onto the carrier. How slick is that? I really like that. So you can actually attach that ramp right to it. So uh, let's get her done. All right, basically just gonna grab our ramp. The mounting holes for the ramp are actually built right into the stand. Drop that into place. <laughs> That's pretty slick. That's pretty damn slick. And then uh, just a quick reference note on this. Um, this is where you're going to use down is going to be your nylon washer, a washer, and got the little butterfly right here. So I'm going to get that put on now. Nylon washer, washer, butterfly. Butterfly, if I could turn the damn thing. Should go on there. It's like there's some powder coat or something on there. First time is, there she goes. And you can lock that ramp right down. I really do like this feature of it. And carry that ramp around, keep it real nice and easy. Yeah, I gotta knock off some of this powder coat. A little tough going the first try. And getting these buggers in was the, was the hardest part, getting those uh, butterflies in. But then there's a locking pin that goes in to each one of these to make sure that those don't rattle through. So we can go ahead and put these in, just like that. And uh, yeah, how cool is that? It's pretty much together, little ways to go. I think we're on the last step. All right, last step. Got to put the block in. <laughs> it's a little puzzlement, had to read stuff, but if I would have just turned the page, it clearly tells you. <laughs> That uh, it goes this way, all right? So this needs to get installed onto this. The wide open side goes onto the hitch and this side slides onto your tube. Then you lift it on, throw it in, put the pin in when it lines up, get the pin in, then tighten all this down. So that's the next step. We're going for insertion. All right, so just double checking my diagram. Goes like that. Like that, that G, that's the hitch. I believe that is right. It's gonna go on there like that. So I can lift this up just a little bit, slide this onto the pipe, and let's lift with the knees, legs. 
It's not that bad. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and there we go. So next thing, let's get the pin in. And just need to put this on there until it gets kind of lined up. It's going to come out just a little bit. And then, just like that, and I can put the locker in, put that on, lock it, that ain't coming off, <laughs> that's cool, I'm glad I upgraded to that pin, that's kind of cool, and this whole bad boy locks in here, and now it says in the instructions, really tight, so I'm going to put these in position, I'll get underneath, and tighten the block on, and then that way, you just kind of pull the pin, but it's some sort of a Another little bracket there. What do they even name that? Um, what do they name it? Clamping block. That's what they call it. But anyway, on to tightening. And just remember, your shorties, let me reach over here, hold this. Your shorter bolts go left and right. Longer bolts are going, longer bolts are going front and back. I'm just get these tightened up. Looks like it's just gonna barely make contact there. Yeah, it just is like another little, I don't know. I don't, I don't really necessarily get the logic of this, but somehow it must tie it all together. And it says to go tight. So when they say go tight, go tight. All right, here we go. Feels pretty damn solid, even on my little uh, Jeep Renegade Latitude. I did go ahead and remove the uh, butterfly nut so I can take the ramp off. On the ramp, I didn't even notice this, but there are two little pegs. See those? There's two holes in the end of the, of the uh, carrier that this is gonna just drop right into. <laughs> just like that. And uh, tell you what, that is not too crazy of an angle to have to push one of these motorcycles up. So uh, let's take a closer look. So here it is. Again, look at that angle, not too much of an incline. This is a pretty low um, vehicle, right? So, I mean, me, I'm by 220. I'm like jumping on it. it, wasn't no big deal. But yeah, I'm optimistic. The only thing I'm a little curious about is whether or not I've got enough clearance here for the handlebars pardon the recycling here in the corner you know the handlebars i mean they must not they can't come out further than this i should actually measure that to make sure before i push a bike up on here but if we've got clearance on the handlebars <laughs> i mean this is feeling pretty rock solid to me so i guess there's only one way to kind of figure this stuff out right it's uh to push a bike up and see if it'll work. All right, let's see if I can push this up here. The incline's not bad. Got my front brake, got it lined up. Oh man, this holds, this is amazing. That's how you catch. <laughs> and on. Not much clearance though, I will say that. I'm gonna wanna take it pretty, pretty easy. The handlebars are clearing as well. Gosh, let me get some toe straps. I'll take a look. The old Renegade is squatting just a little bit, but we do have a 350 up there. And we got a little bit of clearance, not a ton of clearance. These are for short trips, for sure. This ain't cross country stuff. I find both, most of my bikes within like 20 miles of my house. So it's holding it. Oh, that's nerve wracking seeing your bike up there like that. A little, that clearance is a little, uh, little scary, but uh, get it ratcheted down and uh, see how it goes. So I think it might be doable. I wish I had a big pickup truck though. That would make it a lot better. I'm gonna do some slow testing with this over the weekend. I think um, like a 100, 125, anything smaller than like a 175, this would be no problem. I think a 350 might be pushing it just a little bit. 
So there you have it. Biggest complaint on my Renegade is wheel clearance. Might mean that I need to upgrade the suspension a little bit. Hmm, darn. The thing is definitely well built. I mean, it's not gonna break off of here. I've checked my ratings on everything. I am well within spec on this stuff. Just that back end clearance is what's given me a little bit of heebie-jeebies. So, you know, I'm gonna go and possibly pick up a smaller bike tomorrow. No problem at all hauling that on this. But uh, man, when you start diving into the 350s, I wouldn't do anything bigger than this. This is like minimal. <laughs> You know, that, or that's the maximum rather. But for functionality for a smaller bike, I think this Black Widow Carrier, is, uh, it's gonna serve its purpose. It's gonna save me from tearing bikes down and throwing them in the back of the car. Um, I think it's gonna be useful for sure. Um, but yeah, there it is. Hope you found it useful. Just, uh, yeah, it really taxes the old Renegade. <laughs> Not too surprised about that. It's, it's uh, kind of a low vehicle anyway, but... Uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. I love how the ramp is integrated into everything. You can pull that ramp off. It's low, so it makes it really easy. I mean, I pushed up that 350 pound motorcycle all by myself. The ramp, again, we went through all this stuff in the beginning of the video. It's rated for a 600 pound bike. Uh, my hitch is rated for, I think, 800 pound tongue weight. So it should be fine, but uh, it's gonna be a little butt pucker going through it. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a fun one to put together. I was really curious to see how this Black Widow motorcycle carrier was gonna work out. My opinion, I think you're pushing it with the 350s, but anything smaller than that, anything less than, you know, 300 pounds, I think it could be done. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe, thumbs up the video. Be sure to keep out, uh, check out keeponwrenching.com. Get some merchandise, request a free sticker, Join the Facebook group. Keep on wrenching community group on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'll share some experiences with this thing, honestly. Um, gonna have to build some trust here. We'll see you in the next video or live stream.